This video covers timers and interrupts using a Node MCU running MicroPython. If you've watched our last video about GPIO input and output, leave the components in the same place for this video. No physical components need to be changed from the last video. An LED should be connected between GPIO5 and ground with a resistor, and a button should be connected between GPIO4 and ground with no external pull-up resistor. Previously, an infinite loop had to be running in order for our program to delay the LED or check for a button press. Through timers and interrupts, the same result can be achieved while also freeing room for other processes to run. Let's start by programming a simple timer that blinks the LED once every second. After connecting to your Node MCU and acquiring a REPL, write the following code in the Thani editor. Alternatively, you can copy and paste the code from our guide or the gist, which are linked in the description of this video. Save the program as main.py to your Node MCU, and press the restart button to run the program. You should observe the LED blinking once per second. Notice how the REPL prompt at the bottom of Thani is available to take commands. This is due to the timer not needing an infinite loop to run. Using a timer in this way frees processing time that can be used to execute other code. Let's go over what is happening in this program. First you can see that we initialize the LED as an output on GPIO5, just like before. Then its value is initialized to zero, or off. Next, we create a timer object and set its ID to negative one. This indicates that it is a virtual timer. The next line starts the timer, but first initializes three parameters. The first parameter, period, is the time the timer takes between executing the callback function. This is set to 1000, meaning 1000 milliseconds. The second parameter, mode, can be set to one of two options, one shot or periodic. Periodic means that the timer will execute the callback continuously once every period, while one shot means that the callback is executed only once after the period is up. The third parameter, callback, is set to a function that will run after every period time. This can be set to a normal function, but in this case we set it to a lambda function that toggles the LED. Now let's move on to interrupts. Interrupts are useful for when code needs to be run in response to an event, such as a button press. Instead of continuously checking the state of a button through the use of an if statement within an infinite loop, an interrupt request, or IRQ, can be attached to a button pin to run an interrupt service routine, or ISR. This achieves a more efficient and more effective program. Write the following code in the Thani editor, or copy it from our guide or gist in this video's description. This code toggles the LED when the button is pressed through the use of an interrupt. Save the program to your device as main.py, then press the restart button. While testing, you should notice that the LED certainly does seem to respond to the button press, but it may be unexpectedly switching states. We'll fix this soon, but first let's take a look at this code. We start by declaring an output LED pin in an input button pin with a pull-up resistor, just like before. The last line initializes the IRQ for the button pin. The first parameter, the trigger, is the event that will trigger the handler to run. This could be a falling edge, a rising edge, or both, implemented through the use of a bitwise OR. Check the guide for details on that. The second parameter, the handler, is just like the callback with the timer. It is set to the function that is called when the trigger event happens. In this case, we set it to a lambda function that toggles the LED. This image is an idealized representation of a voltage to time graph over GPIO4, the button pin. The high level in this case is 3.3 volts, and the low level is 0 volts. When the button is pressed, the signal drops from high to low, creating a falling edge. On the other side, when the button is released, the voltage rises from 0 volts to 3.3 volts, creating a rising edge. 
This image is a more realistic representation of what happens during a button press. When pressed, the button doesn't immediately land flat on its final position. Instead, it bounces from low to high a few times before eventually stabilizing at one position. Luckily, we can detect this through code, and this can be used to fix the inconsistency we were observing before when testing the interrupt program. Write or copy the following code from our guides or gist into your Thani editor. This code is the same as the previous code with some exceptions. First, the IRQ handler is changed to a function called button callback. This function passes the pin through a new debounce function, which determines if 32 consecutive readings were the same. If they are, it returns true or false, depending on the value. Otherwise, it returns none. If false is returned to our button callback, a deep bounced button press was detected and the LED is toggled. Save the program as main.py to your node MCU and press the restart button to run the program. You should notice that the LED toggles are now changing more consistently with your presses. This concludes the video. I encourage you to check out the written guide that goes along with this video. Again, it can be found in the description below this video. At the bottom of the guide, in the putting it all together section, there is a final exercise that will help you to reinforce the concepts from this video. The hidden example solution that goes along with this exercise can also be found there. Good luck.